Hello, good day, and welcome back to Go on the Run. And if the audio is sounding a little bit off today, that's because I'm recording this from a hotel room, and that's where the next two or three videos are going to be recorded from. So I'm on the road, but I still want to get some video out. I was trying to get it out before I leave, but yeah. Anyway, let's get to it. So last video, I showed you the microservice um, feature in NATS. And I show you how e relatively easy it is to use. This week, I want to show you how you can do something that we've done in um, GoFiber, and that is where you can have a set of endpoints appear on the a like think of it a common name. And so we're going to pretend that we want to make a calculator service and so we have some some math function like add subtract multiply and divide just for simplicity and now we want to group that under like a um you know a group call let's say simple so we can say these are the simple operation and then we could probably have another group in for more complex operation like exponent and powers and all that sort of stuff right um logarithm and so on so um, let's just get started. So first thing we do, so I copied our previous example, 21 to 22. And so I'm just going to start my VS, uh, my Codium editor here. And so already at front end, it looked like. And this is the code that we had before. Now, because again, I'm on the road and I have to reduce my screen size. So you might notice that um, the font size also um, a little bit small, but I'll try and see how big I can keep it. Okay, so now let's just modify. So in example, episode 22, this is example one. So we'll close this to give us some space. And let's see, can we zoom in? And so we want to call this the, um, let's call it the calc service. Okay, so that's going to be the name. And we're going to say simple calculator service. All right. Um, or we're just going to say calculator service, a calculator service. And then um, in terms of, um, we're not going to call this greeter, but rather um, let's just change the name to calc service. All right. So that nothing changed there so far. Um, and instead of having, let's say, this handler, let's change it to our add handler. So we're going to add and let's say we got, um, we're going to, to make things, um, sort of simple. What we'll, we'll do is create a type for, you know, an operation. So we will have something called mat operation a type, and it has what two, um, an operand, two operands, right? Um, up, um, you can think of it as left and right, right? So operand one and two. And then you can depend on the operation that's called, we're going to be able to use those operand and we can just call them A and B. That's fine. And then we can also have a type to represent our result, right? And so, yes, we can just use int and that's it. Okay. So we have our type. And so let's go here. So the first thing I want to do is say so we have a add operation here and so this is going to be the add handler and then um, within the add handler let's change things so what do we want to change well since we're saying that we're going to send json data which we can you know on marshall into this um, struct value or a value of that struct then we should just be able to use the json that on marshall um, function it takes a slice of bytes which is our data and then it has to put it into a variable which is going to be our operands right and so all we have to do then is to say we're going to get the data we don't need to cast it to a string anymore and we just need a um our operands right and so that's it pretty simple and then of course this returns an error so we can check and see if error is not equals to nil, you know, invalid operands, if we can't parse that. And then if everything is fine, like we can actually parse our 
um, operands, what we should do then is create the result. So our result is going to look like this. It's going to look like operands um, A and plus B, essentially. That's how we're doing. Then, of course, we need to, let's get rid of this. We need to create the response object. How are we going to send that back now as JSON also? So our response um, value is really going to look like met that results that, you know, set the result value. And here, when we go to do the response, if you remember, I showed you last time that we can respond with a slice of bytes or we could respond and say we want to send back something as JSON. And so this basically take anything we want to respond with and, um, you know, marshal it to JSON. So we want marshal JSON data, do our computation and whatever we have to do, and then return back JSON result. So let's just check and see if this simple addition um, or this simple thing to our um, service work before we go ahead and group it and then add in more. So we should just take the simplest thing. Okay, so this shouldn't be very different from what we had before, except in all we call it. So of course, we're gonna just start up NAT server. We don't need to do anything funky. And we're going to run our application. So go run main. And so that should be running, it's connected. And then the only thing we need to do is do a NAT request. And now we want to request to the add subject. And so uh, let's just send something silly. We should get an error message. And so invalid operand, and that's correct. And so if we wanted to send, um, you know, A and give it the value, let's say three, and then B and then give the value two, for example. And so that's a JSON object. And you can see the result is five. So that works. Okay, sweet. So very simple, right? We got our results as a JSON. All right, so now that that worked, let's now just go ahead and implement the other methods. Now, I'm not gonna show you me typing those because again, we're just doing multiply, addition, subtraction because we want to and divide just because we wanna show grouping. Okay, so let me skip to the place where I have these method implemented. And we're back. So let me show you what I did. I assume that all you would have done the same. So we saw addition before, subtraction is simply doing the subtraction operation, give it change the name, uh, multiplication, multiplication operation. Division is the only one that's kind of special, and that is before we can divide, we have to say if we're gonna divide A by B, we have to make sure that B is not zero, else we'll get an exception, right? Our program is essentially gonna crash. So I test that, and if B is zero, say we can't divide B is zero, and that's out. All right, so that's just a little check. And then now we could go ahead and add these additional endpoints. So let's just do that. And so we're going to do this guy is sub. This is most. And then this is our divide. Very easy. Okay, so if we go back here and we stop our program and then we rerun it, and now, okay, our addition should still work. And then now if we call sub, that should work, give us one. And mold should work, none of this should be a surprise, right? But since we wrote the code, we should test it. Maybe we made a mistake, uh, two times three. And then, of course, if we do a division, uh, we're doing an old number division, we'll get one. We didn't, we're not doing floating point, no. That's a different thing we could do. And then, of course, if we try to divide by zero, so now we have that implemented. Um, but well, wouldn't it be nice if instead of sending something like this, we could actually say like maybe a simple, um, you know, calc that div or something like calc that um, simple that div or even simple that div, right? Um, so we can say we're using a simple um, division, simple calculation. So we can kind of have these operation group on the um, be grouped, right? Um, it's probably a little bit cleaner than just have a bunch of individual things. And this grouping become um, important when you start having a bunch of similar things and you can't reuse it, right? It becomes like um, very difficult if you want to use that name again. So having some grouping or parent above it might help. So the way you create a group is very simple. Um, 
what we're going to do is before we start adding our endpoints to the service itself, what we will do is create a group called simple. So simple group. And so to create a group, all we have to do is create the group off of the service. So we'll say simple group colon equals the calc service. And you see it says add group. And so we can add a group. And it says add group return a group interface allowing for more complex endpoint topology topologies. A group can be used to register endpoint with given prefix. And so we just give it a name string. We could configure the group with uh, group options, but for now, we'll just say our group is called simple. So this is the simplest thing. Um, we don't need to worry about options, additional options. So just give our group a name. And then now we can, instead of using this bit to register our endpoints, we can just simply use our group, simple group. And notice what I did. I created a group and this was a like GoFiber. Once I create a group, or uh, once I create a group, I can just use that to add the endpoints instead of adding it directly to the application in the case of GoFiber. Here, instead of adding it to the service, I create the group um, from the service, and then I just add the endpoint to the group. And because our group name is simple, now when we go back here and we do Control C, and let's do clear the screen, and then run our application again. And this time we can experiment with, you know, we can use the NATS tool. And remember, we have the micro um, thing that we can use. And so we can do micro stat, and then we can do, uh, let's do micro, then list. And then you can see we have the calculator service. And then we can do stats on service and calculator. We can, and notice we have. Um, these endpoints. Um, we can also do info. And we have four endpoint. Notice the name now. The subject is called simple.div, simple.sub, simple.mul, and all these other things, right? Because the subject now takes on the name of the um, group. And so, like I was saying before, now we can do NATS request. And we can just send our request to simple that divide or simple that add. And that's how simple it is to add groups. Um, again, I'm doing this from a hotel, so I'm going to try and make them short and keep the videos coming as fast as possible and end it here. But before I go, I want to say thanks to our Patreon subscriber, um, to our Patreon supporter, Mikhail. Thank you so much. And if you made it this far and you like what you see, please consider subscribing if you're not a subscriber. If you're already subscribed, thank you so much. Thanks for your patience. And let's hope that I can see you here again in just a few days. All right. Take care. Bye.